should there be a shift in the way the, the U.S. approaches its, its global health? Should there be, as people are living longer, Actually, should, should there be more efforts so in that direction? So let me give you a very nice example. So in when um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, this is a type of cancer. Uh, we used to treat it in this country with chemotherapy and radiation. And then the National Cancer Institute decided to go to Uganda and do an experiment where they did not have radiation therapy, but they could use chemotherapy. And they said, okay, can we cure Hodgkin's lymphoma by using chemotherapy? And, they, and there was a, a wonderful pathologist, uh, Buckets, who described fascinating cases of lymphoma. In fact, did strong work in Africa. Do you know that by that experiment, showing that you can cure lymphoma with chemotherapy, we brought it back to the US. And now you can cure lymphoma with chemotherapy. We would never have known that if we hadn't gone globally to do a simple question in a resource poor setting. So I think that now that we talk about H1N1, when we talk about efficacy of vaccines, when you were talking about getting uh, a vaccine at 40 cents, a pneumococcal vaccine. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if we all got vaccines for 40 cents in this country? Our healthcare costs will go down as well, <laughs> right? <laughs> so why couldn't that experiment be done in the United States? The United ah. experiment? Yeah, this is an interesting Because point. we always think more is better. Because we knew the answer. We <laughs> knew that you needed right. chemotherapy and radiation, and it would be unethical to right. try the chemotherapy alone because we'd be depriving the patient of that which we knew was good. Which really gets to the heart of an awful lot of the trials that are going to have to be done. Yeah. It gets harder and harder to do clinical trials when we think we have a standard of care. And so it's a, it, you know, you think about this cancer genome project that's going to be producing hundreds and hundreds of targets <laughs> and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of new drugs that are going to have to be tried in all sorts of combinations. One of the greatest worries I have is how we're going to get all the clinical trials, frankly, all the companies funded to be able to do this and the clinical trials to do this. The science, I'm pretty sure, will come mm -hmm. through. But the ability to deliver, and it's going to take the whole globe to do it. I, I want to good. follow up on that in a particular yeah. way. And that is that the way that drugs are marketed in this country, it's very difficult for a company to develop uh, uh, over long term and successfully market a drug that's directed at only 2% of the cancers. Because? Because there's no profit in it. I mean, you, well, you've spent this huge... Well, cured the cancer. You, you, killed you can actually percent. make a yeah, good yeah, profit on something that cures yeah. something. Then, so, then that message needs to be given to the pharmaceutical well, companies in a way that they come so back that, to okay. us with it. I, I'm I not think, sure that that's... I, I, I think some of them know that. I think, I, so. I think they've learned it. So yeah. take, a, take a good example. Okay. A drug that was being targeted against lung cancer. And we did yep. the study here, and we, it failed. The drug failed. They did the study in Japan, and it worked beautifully. Yes. Right? Yes. And they went back and said, why did it work beautifully in Japan? I didn't work here. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that, in fact, the drug works when you have a target, when you have a mutation mm -hmm. in EGFR. And it was because that mutation was specific to the lung cancer that was in Japan. So I think all of the drug com pharmaceutical companies have learned from that one Although experiment. Although I'm going to note for that particular example, because yeah. okay. I know it well, <laughs> it wasn't actually the company that went and did the That's genetic right. study. Right. The company resisted the genetic study. I rest my case. It was a bunch I rest of my, my colleagues in Boston yeah. who did this study. It was the rogue yeah. scientists. Because <laughs> they, the company at that point, yeah. and this was a particular, most of the companies I think know better, thought, oh, we don't want to know about these genetic things because it'll cut up the market. That's, that's that has changed, though. Wow. I think that's what Pumi's saying, is that yeah. really has changed. But at the time of that, about but seven, eight years ago, people were still thinking, we don't want to know how to cut up our market. Now I think people are saying, it's we want to know how to target the most efficacious agent yeah. to the right patient because that's good medicine and will turn out to be good business. But that means that we should, for every clinical trial, be obtaining the genotypes of the tumor and of the patient. And, yes. that's, Absolutely. and, that's, Absolutely. and Absolutely. that is still yes. not routinely yeah. being done.